Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, as promised, here we are talking about the tear layer. So we talked about the lacrimal apparatus, which is extremely closely linked to the tear layer, as I mentioned. Uh, and now we're going to talk about the tears themselves, their structure, how everything kind of works together. I would argue that this is the most important part. I, I really want you to know about the lacrimal apparatus. I want you to know about everything we talk about. However, this is the one, this, this is the real, you know, bread and butter of tear, understanding, you know, human tears and understanding how they work and the important components of them and to recognize when things go wrong, where the issue might be coming from. So uh, let's really dig into this one. And uh, this is actually really an enjoyable one. I really like talking about tears. So I <laughs> know that's a little bit weird, but uh, maybe you'll, you'll agree with me once we kind of move into this. So let's jump in. So let's take a look at a diagram here. You'll see there's the eye, and there's a kind of a cross-section of the different parts of the uh, of the tear layer. And we're going to go bit by bit going through this, talking about what these all these different layers are. So first, the tear film is spread over the cornea, right, the outermost por portion of the eye. And I've mentioned that a few times, uh, with the help of the eyelids. Okay, the eyelids are like little windshield wipers. They move the tears around. We talked about how the lacrimal gland excretes most of the tears goes onto the eye and it works its way down the eye into the lacrimal lake and all that stuff. However, the eyelids, all the you know involuntary blinks that we do, the main function of this is of course to clean away debris and keep everything kind of fresh. However, it is spreading tears along the cornea and also the conjunctiva, which hasn't been mentioned here. So you could put a little note in there that also the conjunctiva because uh, it needs to be lubricated as well. So there we go, bottom layer there, the pink layer, we can, we're gonna label that as the cornea. <clears throat> Now, next, the mucus layer and the aqueous layer and the oil layer. All right, so that's the sandwich of the tear layer. This is always the way it looks. This is the way it needs to look in order to function properly. And we're going to talk about all those layers in just one second here. So the, the four main purposes of the tear film are, first, keep the cornea moist and lubricated. We've mentioned that. Very, very important. Provide refractive surface. We just talked about in the last lecture how tears are very important to vision. They provide their own little refractive surface and they also keep the refractive surface of the cornea perfectly clear, transparent, healthy, so that it can do its job. Cleans away debris and waste, right? There's a lot of, <clears throat> we get gunk in our eyes. We get dust, we get debris, we get sand sometimes from the wind, all these different things. These tears are there to wash away all the bad stuff. And also immunological defense, okay? So uh, that's, Think of it as, you know, if you get bacteria, viruses, there is a certain component to the tears that are um, a defense mechanism against disease. Now, there are times when it is incapable of, of meeting the demand. That's when we get eye infections and things like that. However, if it didn't have its ability, its immunological abilities, we'd probably get eye infections all the time. So it does have that component of protection as well. So keep those <clears throat> four purposes in mind, however, because they are very important, right? Like this is something that uh, you're going to notice all the time in your kind of, in your you know, adventures through eye care that people with tear problems have major eye problems. So, and these are the four main reasons, because if you don't have enough tears and they're not doing these four things for you, you're undoubtedly going to have some issues. So tears are extremely important. So we talked about the four layers. Let's talk, well, sorry, the three layers. Let's talk about where they come from. Okay. So the oil layer, that is the outermost layer, right? The one that's on the very top is produced by the meibomian glands in the eyelids. Uh, and its purpose is to seal the tear layer and protect it from evaporation, okay? We have a pretty liquid substance here. What's well, completely limp liquid. What, does, what do liquids do when they're exposed to oxygen? They evaporate. And we don't want our tears to evaporate. As a matter of fact, tear evaporation is one of the number one causes of dry eye syndrome. And it's usually due to meibomian gland dysfunction um, and the tears evaporate. So it's extremely important that we have a very solid 
uh, oil layer that keeps things locked in that the, prohibits the tears from being evaporated away, okay? Now, the aqueous layer is mostly water. That's the big chunk that we just looked at. It's the largest part. It's produced by the lacrimal gland, which we looked at in the lacrimal apparatus, and it serves to lubricate the eye. This is the majority of the tear layer. It's the viscous part, the liquid part, um, and it's sandwiched between the oil layer, which we just talked about, and the mucus layer, which we are just about to talk about, the inner uh, the inner mus uh, mucin layer allows the tear film to rest on the cornea evenly without being absorbed um, and is produced by the goblet cells of the conjunctiva. So think about the different structures we've talked about here. Right? We've talked a little bit about the eyelids. We've talked uh, you know, a little bit more in depth about the conjunctiva. And we talked about their functions. The conjunctiva is like a safety net, keeping things safe. And the eyelids have multiple purposes, protection and windshield wipers, like we talked about. But they all have little secondary functions as well, which is really cool, right? Because you know the, the meibomian glands are extremely important in the tears, and it's something that we always, or you know, eye doctors always look at to make sure they're functioning properly. The goblet cells of the conjunctiva are producing this mucus that allows the tears to rest on top. Because think about it, the tears are very much water uh the the sorry the the aqueous layer i'm sorry i was stuttering there but the aqueous layer of the tear is very much water it can easily be absorbed through tissue that mucus layer allows it to sit on top and rest and be evenly distributed across the cornea and the conjunctiva without easily being absorbed right so very interesting how all these little parts and as we travel through this course especially when we start talking about things like dry eyes and we start talking about contact lens wear and all these different things these little substructures the mobomian glands the goblet cells the lacrimal gland the tear layer the mucus layer the aqueous layer all of these things are extremely important this is this should be common parts of your vocabulary moving forward as an optician these are all things that you sh you will be discussing and of course um, need to understand not only with your patients but also with colleagues right because we want to have a common language here that we could all discuss so of course how does this apply to us as opticians we've already touched on it a little bit um, tears are critical to vision right absolutely we just talked about a number of reasons why tears are critical to, to vision uh, refraction health everything always remember tears are important to vision i've mentioned it so many times now over two lectures this is the number one take-home thing you have to remember uh dry eye syndrome is very common okay so we've talked i've mentioned it a number of times in the last two uh lectures we've talked a little bit more today uh, or in this lecture at least in as far as where some of this dysfunction comes from mobobian gland dysfunction where the oil layer is not very stable is very common Another common ailment of women who've worn makeup for years, bulbobian glands get clogged, don't secrete the oils, and the tears evaporate away. A couple of other reasons for dry eye syndrome, that being the number one, however. Um, so just remember that tear dysfunction is a very, very common issue. So that's another reason why we need to know our tears very well. Um, you know, bulbobian gland common dysfunction, uh, sorry, bulbobian gland dysfunction is the common cause. Um, Dry eyes are a huge disqualifier for contact lens wear. We're not talking contact lenses just yet. However, it is good to kind of mention it now so that we have it in the back of our mind. Uh, dry eyes and contact lenses do not mix. We are fortunate at this point and juncture in eye care that contact lenses are pretty darn safe. Um, they've always been safe, but they've never been safer than they are today because of technology and because of, you know, the implementation and, and perfection well almost perfection of soft contact lenses um, however if you have dry eyes it doesn't matter how good the lens is it doesn't matter how advanced the technology is it's bad news even refractive surgery you know if a person a patient's interested in having lasik prk uh, or any kind of other procedures done even that you know dry eyes is a is can often be a big disqualifier so just remember Tears are so important for all different facets of vision care. Um, and we, and then the reason I mentioned warm compresses, omega fatty acids in lid care is because something you're going to hear a lot, uh, for, you know, a lot of recommendations from the doctors. And I always like 
to introduce this early and then go into more detail later, but this is kind of a remedy that you're going to hear quite often. And, you know, every once in a while, there's remedies that we as opticians can even recommend to our patients. Again, I don't recommend you making any kind of medical recommendations until you've gained a little bit of experience and a little bit of confidence and you know exactly when to do it. However, there's nothing really, um, you know, medical, well, nothing pharmaceutical, at least, about recommending these things. Um, and this is a very common uh, remedy for tear dysfunction. Um, warm compresses help move things around, right? If it's blocked glands or ducts or anything like that, sometimes a warm compress can sometimes help dislodge these things. Uh, omega fatty acids are, helped to, are, are known to help pr promote healthy production of oils and mucuses. Um, and lid care, we'll talk about cleaning the lids, right? We, you know, especially for women who wear a lot of makeup, um, cleaning those lids is extremely important. You will notice as you kind of learn how to use different instruments like the slit lamp and things like that, when you look at a person's eye under a microscope, uh, you will be amazed on how much residue is left over from makeup. Uh, I've had women sometimes, you know, who I'm assessing and, 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 you know, doing a slit lamp examination, and I'll ask them, when's the last time you wore makeup? And they say, ah, I don't really wear makeup very often. I, I haven't worn makeup in months, I mean, probably the, especially with COVID, right? I haven't gone out in two years, uh, so I haven't really worn makeup. Well, you still have makeup on your eyes um, and you can see it with the microscope, right? So lid care is very important. We usually only recommend lid care to people, well, we often only recommend lid care to people who are having problems, but really every patient should be aware of lid care routines um, of using either wipes or using like a, a baby soap and cleaning those lid margins and making sure they get all the makeup away because you don't want to have issues. We're going to talk about some ocular ailments very soon, uh, things like blepharitis and, and other conditions that you really don't want to have and your patients don't want because it's no fun. So, you know, doing all these preventative measures uh, can be very helpful. And understanding how they work uh, is a very good skill for an optician to have, all right? So we've really talked a lot about tiers and, and all the different accessory structures in the last two lectures. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from the tiers for now because it is going to be something we're going to revisit in other junctures of our course. Um, but again, you know, make your notes, study these notes, and learn to love tiers because it's going to be a very, very important, uh, you know, facet of your skill set. All right, hope you enjoyed this one and let's move on to the next.